I think a lot of people think I love fragrance. You know, I'm not against it. So damp and skin again. The cult members have been summoned. The denomination of the Welsh twins has obliged you to behold James Welsh's ultra hydrating nighttime skincare routine. And as a good skincare sect and cult member, I am here to react. <laughs> and for those who don't know or are new here, hello, I did not say cult, I said club. And, and I didn't say summoned, I said notified because we turn those notifications on, obviously. My name is Cassandra Bankson, and I am a horrendous video editor. As in, I have reacted to multiple James and Robert Welsh videos, I have reacted to Hiram's videos, Susan Yara's video, all of the Harper's Bazaar videos, and I just don't edit them. Because it takes freaking forever, and there are only 24 hours a day, and only so many brain cells left inside of my cranium. Outside of my obsessive role as a Welsh Twins cult member and skincare addict, I'm also a medical esthetician. I'm an expert and I've been in the industry for over 10 years, and although I've worked alongside and with doctors and dermatologists, I am not a physician myself. That being said, I love analyzing, scrutinizing, participating in skincare seances, and taking part in questionable skincare cult-like behavior. And um, seeing as one of the cult leaders is here in front of our screens, that's what we're going to be doing next. Allow this to be your weekly reminder that James and Robert Welsh are not the same person. You're welcome. Predictions. Tons of K-beauty products, multiple skincare essences, toners, or hydrating serums. Nothing with hyaluronic acid at this point. And if Brie doesn't make an appearance in this video, I will be sorely disappointed. So before I get into my routine, I need to let you know, of course, I am a skincare reviewer. It's my job to try so many different skincare trends and products. So the routine I'm about to do isn't like a normal, normal routine. There's probably maybe one or two too many products and it's definitely not for everyone. James Welsh is not only a skincare reviewer, but he also talks about hair care and men's grooming. And if that sounds like your thing, be sure to go follow him on Instagram where you're gonna see a lot of stuff that you're not gonna see here. See, I am a good cult member, okay? I mean club, okay? But my evening routine is the only time in the day where I really, really get to not think about work, despite my work being about skincare. But it's like the, I usually take an hour to do my evening skincare routine and just concentrate on myself. I treat it as a real self-care moment. First off, we love skincare being self-care, but James, an entire hour? I cannot believe he spends an entire hour. I, as well, use my skincare routine as my refresh moment. It's the moment that I have for myself where no one is yelling at me, no one's paging me, phones aren't going off, I'm not having an existential crisis. Um, I don't even have my phone with me when I do my skincare routine because it is that relaxing. I just want my phone away from me. But an hour. I'm gonna need to start reorganizing my schedule because this is goals, okay? This is the Kool-Aid that we all want to start drinking. <laughs> Did that go too far? Too far? Little bit? Little bit? Nah. Yeah? I'll just continue pressing play. The first thing I do is put these little patches in my hair. These are just like little Velcro patches that stop any hair falling onto my face. I break out very easily from hair product. Um, so when I cleanse, I don't want any of that product touching my face. I love that he brings these up. These little Velcros have been around for years, but I love that he actually uses them. I have longer hair, so I use a skincare headband. Um, but either way, it's a good idea to keep your dew out of your face so it doesn't get all producty. I also love that he brings up breakouts from hair products. There was a study he did in the UK, I think it was by Dr. Alison Layton and a few other people, and um, they looked at a girl's hair length on her back and how that correlated to back acne. And yes, there was a correlation between hair length and back acne because the products, the conditioners, etc., that were used on the hair could actually drip down the back and cause breakouts. I spoke with them about that study in Prague back in 2013. It was a long time ago, so I'm sure their research has progressed since then. I will go check on it. Um, but if you are struggling with acne around the hairline or around your body, definitely look at some of those pomades that you might be using. Definitely look at what your conditioner or your shampoo is that's on your shoulders. A brand that I know and love is called Scene. It's from a Harvard dermatologist and it's made for skin and hair to help with breakouts, but also to rejuvenate your scalp and keep your skin as well as this area healthy. Um, but you could also do like James and just use your little Velcros and... So I am a religious sunscreen user. I use it every single day, no matter what day or time of the year, inside and outside. So I have to take all that off. I always double cleanse. So of course a cleansing balm or a cleansing oil for me is the best way to really, really just melt everything away and clear it off before I go in and cleanse my skin. 
So this is the Deviant Skincare Cleansing Concentrate. As you can see, it's this weird mix of like cleansing balm and cleansing oil. And this amazing color here. This is formulated with loads of kind of acne safe oils. So it's pretty good for all skin types to be honest with you. But I'm not gonna go to ingredients with this one too much because sometimes skincare is just about liking a product because it feels good and it just does the job it needs to do. And this is the perfect example of that for me. I need to get this. I am opening it up. He's not gonna go into skincare ingredients, but you damn well know I will because I, being a former acne sufferer who still struggles with breakouts, uh, am very meticulous and obsessed. Um, this is the Cleansing Concentrate. It's not overpriced. I love that he mentions skincare is self-care and how soothing this is on his skin. This does start off with hemp seed oil. That is very different than CBD, but it still comes from the same basic plant. We've got some cucumber. Do we have a little Little bit of jojoba which is my favorite for acne prone skin <gasps> no we don't but that's okay because there are some other great ones in here and again it is mainly oils there is a little bit of beeswax oh i'm vegan so i'm not going to be putting this one on my face anytime soon Aww. but it does have broccoli seed oil and tocopherol which is vitamin e if this works for him the ingredients do look really good i would have added this to my little shop tigger account if it were vegan um yeah, this looks like a really good cleansing balm and I do love that color. I wonder if that's coming um, from the blueberry or potentially from the cucumber or hemp, uh, depending, because that is a bright color. That's also one of the ways you can tell an antioxidant content from oils um, is sometimes by their color as long as color isn't added or even by the pungency. If you taste olive oil and it almost tastes bitter, that right there is closer to the true taste of olive oil rather than the stuff that's a little bit more refined. Fun fact. True olive oil, like true olive oil, is actually really kind of bitter. A little putrid, if I do say so myself. But we're talking about skincare, not nutrition. And speaking of skincare, can we just like look at James's face? It's like Michelangelo's oil painting happening in flesh form. Super luxurious on the skin. And I really take my time to take away all that, all that sunscreen. As someone who also wears sunscreen as religiously as I click on the Welsh Twins' notifications, um, I as well need to remove it at the end of the day. Same with me and some heavier makeup. Uh, you need to get that stuff off, and I love that he brings up double cleansing. It's not for everyone, but it is a great option, especially if you're trying to get sunscreen, makeup products, or any just any film or grime off of your face. As a teenager, I had pretty temperamental bad skin. Um, I had acne, but for me it was the dark spots, the post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation that was left after that you know whilst the doctor could give me something for my acne he couldn't really give me anything to take away that those dark spots here in the UK I don't think dermatologists are as popular in a way as they are in the US so if you've got skincare issue you go to a doctor and they immediately pretty much immediately just seem to prescribe you with you know prescription skincare that's how it was back when I was a teenager a long long time ago so I kind of had to do my own research into how to get rid of those dark spots when I was like 17, when like the internet was just invented. And that just kind of got me obsessed with skincare and ingredients and what works and what doesn't and just seeing it as like a hobby instead of trying to perfect my skin. Isn't it crazy how some of our struggles can lead us into curiosity and therefore inspiration? And education. Um, I had a similar story. My acne was obviously more inflammatory. I really didn't deal with hyperpigmentation or post-inflammatory pigmentation, um, but I struggled greatly with my appearance, with my identity, um, and with like the psychological impacts of the way my skin looked and the way people treated me. And being someone who grew up in the United States, I did have a very different experience with dermatologists. And I'd actually love to know in the comment section, beautiful butterflies, identify yourself as from the US, from the UK, or from elsewhere and please tell me if you agree with James's statement about people in the UK not seeing dermatologists as quickly or them not being as popular. If you're looking for a good derm in the UK, Dr. Sam Bunting, she is amazing. She has a fantastic YouTube channel. Um, there are many more both on Instagram and that you can see in person. I will link them all down below but sometimes it's about access as well. Some people don't have insurance. That happens here in America too. If you don't have insurance, it could cost you $500 to $2,000 just to see a dermatologist and get your skin taken care of. Because also acne is not seen as a necessity or an issue, it's seen as a cosmetic treatment, which is so damaging and harmful to those who are truly struggling with the psychosocial impacts of 
how we look and how we present ourselves to the world. Um, when it comes to the prescriptions he's talking about, hydroquinone is one that works really well. You want to make sure that you're using that under direction from a derm though because you can have rebound hyperpigmentation. Over the counter, things like vitamin C, licorice extract, kojic extract, alpha arbutin, tyrosinase inhibitors, etc. can help. You can look for any of those things, but again, everyone's skin is different. Everyone's conditions are going to be different and what your skin reacts to positively or negatively is going to be variable. It's going to depend. Um, so if you can see a derm, and if you can work with that practitioner to like bring in your skincare, that's what I would recommend. Um, but I would love to know if people in the UK address things differently, since as according to James, derms aren't as popular or maybe they aren't as sought out. Um, I would love to know how healthcare systems around the world impact your ability to see a dermatologist. That is of interest to me. So please leave it in the comments below. Thank you. For me, I say skincare is about uh, progression over perfection. It's about um, products being functional but fun as well. I think there's nothing worse than having um, boring products that make you feel like your skincare is a chore. This. Skincare should be a choice, not a chore. It should be a ritual, not a routine. I love what James said about kind of seeing it as a journey. You know, it's progress, not perfection. And it's okay to want to perfect your skincare routine. I think that is totally fine. But that perfection or that um, level of satisfaction is going to be different for each person, right? And if we can enjoy the process of skincare, sometimes it's not about clearing all of our blemishes or getting rid of all of our hyperpigmentation or God forbid, doing what Instagram tells us and getting rid of our pores right? It's about embracing the fact that we have pores, embracing the fact that our skin does protect us. It helps us feel temperature and pain. It waterproofs us so that we don't fall apart in the shower. And it's respecting that, giving it products that works with it, that still help us achieve a look that we enjoy using to present ourselves to the world. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna emulsify this. I'm gonna add a bit of warm water to make it into this milky texture and rinse away. I'm gonna do that off camera because it doesn't look very good. I rushed into this so quick, I forgot to say my skin type. So I'm oily in my T-zone, very oily. And I have very dry-ish kind of cheeks here with mild rosacea and some irritation down the side. My skincare routine today, I'm gonna to be concentrating on um, repairing my skin and calming my skin and soothing it. There's gonna be not many actives. I'm not gonna be exfoliating, no retinoids, anything tonight or for the next week or so whilst my skin recovers and repairs. Again. If skincare products were people, James Walsh would be a soothing essence toner. No actives, no retinoids today. He just wants to press reset. Even his voice is like pressing reset. Like his skincare channel, it is skincare and grooming, but it's also like continual ASMR. <laughs> he's saying that he wants to press reset on his skin. I want to know what he's resetting. I know that when he and I did the ice challenge, it did not work out well for him. And sometimes people with rosacea can have sensitivities to temperature changes. Um, but I would like to know, is it just the winter? Did he do something else that he's not telling us? What happened that he's needing to press reset on? Or is this just like a weekly, monthly reset that he takes his keratinocytes through? I don't know. But now I want to. I should probably just ask. <laughs> let me let me just ask. So my next product is another cleanser. This is the Matcha Hemp Hydrating Cleanser. This is a pH balanced cleanser. It has some lovely humectants and moisturizing ingredients in to um, basically not strip your skin of all its natural oils and hydration. And I think for me, as somebody with combination skin, I look for pH balance cleansers and gentle cleansers because I need something that will cleanse enough for my oily T-zone but is gentle enough on my rosacea and drier patches. pH balance skincare is like a trend that we saw a lot last year within skincare and we see a lot of trends in skincare. It used to be like makeup, right? That had like all the different trends but as skincare has become more and more popular we've been seeing loads of different trends and I think like along with pH balance new actives and brands trying to find the next big best ingredient was a real trend last year and now those same brands are telling us that we need to calm down this year and we need to repair our skin skinimalism i believe they're calling it which is just a basic skincare routine basically with like a couple of actives but i feel like the next big trend is bringing everything back to basics calming down with actives selecting one or two 
I love that he mentions this and I love that he uses this cleanser, the Matcha Hemp Hydrating Cleanser. It's made by Leah Yu, who you also know that I simp over. She is amazing. Her skincare line is phenomenal. It is K-beauty, but with all of the things that we want out of it, it is inexpensive and effective and this cleanser is so amazing. It is one of the gold standards for non-stripping cleansers in my book. 10 out of 10, highly recommend. And what James brings up about skincare trends, I do agree. Skinimalism, yes, I think that is becoming a thing. I've been seeing it everywhere. Um, I love Dr. Angelo on TikTok, and he's even talking about intentional skincare. Um, I do feel it's about calming things down this year. And again, these trends, we saw them in fashion, saw them in makeup, but now they're in skincare. One thing I do agree and disagree on is pH balanced being a trend. Skincare has always been pH balanced. If it wasn't pH balanced, it wouldn't be good for the skin. Literally every skincare line that has anything good to do about them or is run and formulated by a halfway decent cosmetic chemist is pH balanced because that is just the chemistry of skincare. But where I agree with James is that the trend is it being labeled on the packaging. pH balance has always been there. It's just being labeled now. Um, same with like the percentage of actives or the active ingredients listed on the bottle. That has always been incorporated into skincare products, but all of a sudden we're seeing it as the forefront or we're seeing it as the selling point of the brand. But unfortunately, because brands like The Ordinary and The Inky List are so inexpensive, affordable, and accessible, you can buy 12 little vials of active ingredients. And is it a good idea to add 12 new actives to your face all at once? Absolutely not. And um, unfortunately, during the pandemic, I'm pretty sure a lot of people did that. So giving your skin a break is never a bad idea. Again, the only skincare products you actually need as based on your physiology are a sunscreen to protect yourself from the deadly fire weapons that the sun shoots out on us on a daily basis. And um, a good cleanser, especially for the axillary and the groin area. Now, don't get me wrong, a good moisturizer goes a long way, a good serum, phenomenal, a makeup remover, we can add those things, but are they the absolute necessities? No. And if you want to be a skinimalist, if your skin is irritated, going back to basics is one of the best things you can do. Okay, I'm going to rinse away and then go into my next step. One thing I do do after I rinse away my cleanser is... <laughs> do do. <laughs> okay, sorry, I'm four years old. I take a washcloth and I just kind of like... If I've got cleanser in my hairline, I just pat that away because, especially my beard as well, any left on cleanser seems to irritate my skin when it dries down, so I tend to just remove that very gently. So onto damp skin, I'm gonna go in with my Advanced Stale Radiance Dual Essence from COSRX. I do this on damp skin because the idea is that when your skin is damp, your skin can kind of accept ingredients better into the skin. But really, I just like the way doing a full uh, skincare routine onto slightly damp skin makes my skin looks. It gives it this kind of like really dewy, plump, hydrated look. James is all about the plump hydration. This is another one of those products that he talks about all the time that I want to buy, but my morals and values just won't let me. Um, apparently snail mucin is less destructive to animals and less harmful to animals because it is a natural byproduct. It's like their slime. However, it goes against my morals and values. So maybe that's a good thing because being vegan means that I have to save money. You see, you see a little silver lining there? <laughs> also from a scientific perspective, applying your serums after you cleanse, excellent idea. And yes, it's because of penetration, but the main reason is actually to prevent your skin from losing more water. Just the way evaporation can happen, um, when we take a steamy shower or when we wash our face, we are stripping off the acid mantle, the little lipids that sit on top of our skin. And um, that can cause moisture from inside of our skin to escape more quickly. That is obviously called transepidermal water loss, it can lead to dryness, irritation, etc. It just makes the skin look papery and dehydrated. And so if you have just washed and cleansed the face, if you go in with a serum immediately, it's kind of trapping any moisture that is still in the skin in there before it is allowed to evaporate since you have removed part of or the entire acid mantle, which is different than your moisture barrier or your skin barrier, but it's that little acid mantle. But you still don't want to disrupt it if you don't have to. When it comes to absorbency, think of your skin as like a paper towel, right? Imagine putting a couple drops of like blue food dye on a paper towel. They won't really soak all the way up, right? But imagine taking that paper towel 
and soaking it in water, and then just putting a couple drops of blue food dye at the bottom. That will start to travel up the towel much more easily. Now, your skin is not an absorbent, you know, piece of cotton. It's not a sponge, um, but it does work in a similar way. Therefore, if you want to get things into your pores, if your pores are dampened or if they have been cleansed, um, some of these next products and next steps can penetrate easier. But that also depends on things like the pH, the active ingredients, um, the pKa values of some of these products, which again, I understand can be very technical, not here to stress you out. Skincare is about self-care. But if you wanna learn a little bit more about the science, I do encourage you to do so. Just remember that the second skincare starts to feel overwhelming or stressful, it's not meant to be that way. Go back to basics and remember that it is a choice, not a chore. What I love about this product is the dual side. So you have your uh, snail mucin in here, um, which is ba it's basically hydrating, moisturizing, and then you have your niacinamide Kind of actives in here. Niacinamide for me is one of the best ingredients I've ever used in my whole life because it just does so many different things. But for me, it's about controlling the sebum production, regulating it, but it can also help with um, barrier repair as well. I forgot to say, I do usually do my neck and all the way down to below my nipples, but um, it doesn't look good on camera and it's, the logistics of it don't really work. One question I always get asked is if I've ever seen a dermatologist or an esthetician or had a facial or anything like that. And the answer is no, because it scares me a little bit. Um, I was scared to go to a dermatologist in case they tell me to stop using too much skincare because then I won't have a job. But then I'm also scared to go and get a facial because I don't think I'd be able to relax through it. I think I'd be so interested in what they're using. I want to know, I'd want them to talk me through everything and I just don't feel like it'd be a nice relaxing experience for me. That sounds really weird. <laughs> this is the kind of veracity that we're looking for. Um, derm fear is definitely a thing. I felt it when I was young, and if there's a word of advice that I could give to younger me, it's that please remember you pay the practitioner. Healthcare workers and providers are here to support you. We want to make you feel safe. We want to show you all of your options so that you are able to make choices that are well informed. And if you ever feel like a doctor or a derm, isn't listening to you or is pushing things down your throat, you have every right to get a second opinion and to find someone who actually works with you. Derms are amazing. They've had 12 plus years of school, specifically studying the integumentary system, the hair, the nails, and the skin. Simultaneously, dermatologists are still people. And as people, we don't always jive with all other people. So find someone you like. Same with estheticians, facialists, find someone who gets you. Um, I understand being so curious. I love that James is a skin intellectual, someone that loves to talk about and learn about skincare. Um, also, ignorance is bliss, not wanting to walk in and to be told to use less products. Yep, I would cry on the inside too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. One day, maybe. I don't know. Oh, I would love to extract things out of James's face. <laughs> so creepy. I'm so sorry. <laughs> PRP, anyone? Come and get it. Come and get it. I'm gonna re-dampen my skin because I like to do a whole routine damp and usually when I'm not filming, I just leave my skin damp after a cleanser and then I'll go into every step and then I'll spray my skin before moisturizer and apply moisturizer. But because I'm filming, it takes a bit longer. I'm gonna dampen my skin between each step with a Cosrx Centella water alcohol-free toner. James and the moisture. It's like James and the giant peach, but it's James and the essence and the toner and the serum and the hydration. <laughs> um, this is the Cosrx Centella water, the alcohol-free one. This is such a good toner. It is inexpensive. Uh, on Amazon, it looks like it's $12 on sale from 17. This is excellent, and it is one of the many products that this man has made me buy. I was forced. It was it was a cult thing. I had no choice. It was like, purchase these products or die. And I gladly obliged. Obviously. The ingredients in this formula are amazing and the way it feels on the skin backs it up. It's Centella Asiatica, which is tiger grass, super soothing to the skin. We have butylene glycol, hexanediol, betanine, panthenol, which is our vitamin B5. We have allantoin, sodium hyaluronate, and then we have ethyl hexanediol. All of these are super soothing, amazing to the skin. Um, as James mentioned, this is just refreshing. This is one of those sprays that I don't actually hate. There's that water in a can that I despise. It's really overpriced and I know it can feel refreshing, but talking about trans epidermal water loss, it can cause more of it. This, because it actually has some of these hydrating and soothing ingredients, it doesn't evaporate off the skin as quickly and doesn't cause that to happen. And that B5, that panthenol, 
Mwah! Chef's kiss. We love. We love. My next product is the Even Prime Barrier Repair Serum. Um, this just has some like uh, essential fatty acids, ceramides, what people consider the building blocks of your skin. So when my skin is kind of like impaired after experimenting a bit too much, I do tend to go completely fragrance free. I cut out all the actives. I think a lot of people think I love fragrance from my videos, but you know, I'm not against it. I just know there's a time and place for it. We love a cult leader who gets it and who spills the truth. Um, fragrance isn't horrible. I am very similar to James Walsh in the sense that I don't hate fragrance in my products. Now, do I actively seek it out? Not necessarily. But if a product smells like butt, I'm not gonna wanna like rub it on my face if it gives me a headache. Simultaneously, there are some products that have so much fragrance that the fragrance gives me a headache. I do see in his comment section that some people label him as someone who just obsesses over fragrance. I watch all of his content and I don't agree with that personally. I think that he has a very healthy relationship with fragrance and as long as it doesn't irritate his skin and he knows when to give it a break, that is awesome. And I think that everyone else should kind of model that as well. Unless you are specifically concerned, unless you have an allergy, unless your dermatologist has told you to look for fragrance-free products, don't be afraid to use fragrances if they enhance your experience and don't bother your skin. But this serum is just so nice and light. It, um, it's like nourishing and moisturizing enough for my cheeks, but it's light enough for me to use on my T-zone and layer with other products without it being heavy and greasy and oily. I actually don't know this one. This is the Barrier Serum by Spellbreak. I, again, don't know this, but this is a very Welsh Twins cult type packaging. This is super cool. It has neem, it has Centella Asiatica, it's got sea moss, it does have peptides and ceramides, which are fantastic. Um, this looks really cool. And again, ceramide NP is fantastic. Over 50% of the outer layer of your skin, the stratum corneum, is made up of ceramides. Your skin also makes hyaluronic acid naturally, and it has both of these in there. Peptides are what your skin turns into proteins. It happens in your entire body. And um, yeah, this looks really good. All the peptides, some copolymers, the ethyl hexyl glycerin. We love to see it. I'm actually here for it. And um, how much do you cost? And are you cruelty free? Because get into my cart on my doorstep and then on my face ASAP. Thank you. Wait, in-game code to unlock the Twilight and player card in Spellgrape? Is this a gamer thing? Is this skincare that goes into virtual reality? Somebody educate me. <gasps> they have blemish patches that are little purple stars. Okay, Cassandra, focus. <laughs> ADHD has left the chat. The serum stage is a stage where I would invest a little bit of money as well. I think that serum is about $40, maybe a little bit less. But for me, that's the one stage where I could have a very affordable cleanser, a very affordable moisturizer. Um, and the serum is the one stage where I feel like I can get all my treatments. For me, really, really makes a difference um, to the look and, and feel of my skin. So again, I want that glowy, dewy look, so I'm gonna spray this um, Centella water again, um, which is again just water with Centella, so it's kind of like soothing and calming. If this was regular water, I would be a little bit concerned about transepidermal water loss, and um, if this had alcohol in it, I might be a little bit afraid uh, for his rosacea and for, you know, drying out the skin if he wasn't using it as a scaling solution. Um, but again, it's got great ingredients, and especially over the serum, sure. Why not? My next serum is the Cosrx Pure Fit Seeker Serum. This is really just to calm down any redness and irritation and inflammation. One, two, three, that's a bit more than I need. A super lightweight serum that kind of just calms down any irritation. We love someone who doesn't drag the dropper across their forehead. Like, you're not trying to teleport it to Narnia. Just a little drop drop, a little pat pat. We love to see it. This is the Pure Fit Sika Serum from Cosrx. I know he loves this brand and for good reason. This is such a good one. Um, it does have Centella Asiatica extract. It has root extract. It has the leaf extract. Pretty much one of the best kind of whole blends that you can get if you love Centella Asiatica. It does have Panthenol, which is our vitamin B5. It does have the sodium hyaluronate, has allantoin. Um, basically all of those ingredients that are also in the spray, but it's in this serum form. And it does have a couple added ingredients that are meant 
to kind of bulk up the product, give it a serum form, and make it really moisturizing and hydrating to the skin. Um, $28, I love to see it. Uh, super inexpensive, super effective. James loves it. He is the reason that I even know that CauseRx exists. I single-handedly have him to thank for my obsession with their products, including this one. And I'm going to use this avant-garde reusable sheet mask from Experiment. Um, and this is, I love sheet masking. I used to do it <laughs> every single day. Um, but I think the more you use sheet masks, the more you realize how much waste comes with a sheet mask. And I'm not, I'm not like the most environmentally conscious person. Like I'm, now I'm trying to do like little but enough <laughs> when it comes to saving our planet. So I didn't sheet mask for the longest time, and then I saw this, this like silicone occlusive layer that just traps in all that hydration, all your skincare, and when you take it off, you're left with that same dewy glow that you get from sheet masks. And what's great about this one is once it's done, you take it off, you rinse it with your normal cleanser, and then your skin is left glowy, and you can reuse it and reuse it and reuse it for as long as you live. This face mask is made by one of my favorite TikTokers. She's a cosmetic chemist, and she was fed up with all of the environmental waste that happens. Um, this is so exciting. We love to see it. And again, for those who are worried about the consumption of sheet masks, sheet masks are basically pieces of paper with serum soaked into them. I don't consider them a true mask. I consider them a delivery system for serums. I consider a true mask something like a clay mask, right? But we've actually done a video on that already if you want to hear my spiel and you want to hear me, you know, wrap on face masks for 10 minutes. But this one is amazing. It's so awesome. It also reminds me of the du, duet, du you, um, those duix, um, parlez-vous français? No, no, me neither. Um, but it reminds me of those reusable eye patches that Charlotte made. I think there are such amazing and innovative things coming out that are more sustainable and eco-friendly, and I love to see them being put to good use. It's like all of my favorite things coming together in one. You know that song, these are a few of my favorite things. I feel like this is the skincare version of that song. Like Sound of Music, skincare, sandwiched into a YouTube video. Yeah. <laughs> okay, it's been 10 minutes, so let's take this off. Whew. See, I just love like that bit of a glow. And what I love about all the products I'm using is they're hydrating, but they're not greasy and heavy and oily. So my oily T-zone can have a nice glow without feeling bogged down with oils. I know what he means. You know, there's that feeling of being fresh and then there's that feeling of being greasy. And um, he likes the hydrated, he likes the dew, but not the drippy goo. I respect it. So dampen skin again. And then quickly into my moisturizer. Again, this is COSRX. I love COSRX. I feel like they're a more modern take on like CeraVe. This is the Moisture Power Enriched Cream. This is just a nice hydrating occlusive layer to help trap everything in. I think like with the rise of skincare in the last two years and kind of like the rise of CeraVe being one of the best selling skincare brands, other brands have noticed that people do often just want simplicity within their skincare. And I think in drugstores you really do find those simple but effective products at a good price as well. I think a lot of people kind of like look down on drugstore products because they're affordable, but I think we have to get over this idea that expensive skincare is better and that more affordable skincare isn't because that's not true at all. The truth has been revealed. Yes, thank you. I love that James Walsh has said it here and says it regularly. Expensive does not always mean better. I personally don't use CeraVe products. I know that they are recommended by many of the people that I work with and I do respect that, especially since they are affordable and easy to access, but they're not cruelty free, at least from what I can find. I cannot confirm that they are not sold in mainland China on shelves, which concerns me. I did recently purchase this CeraVe Medics, trying to find like an option. I also got this. This is the Dear Claire's Rich Moist Soothing Cream with Ceramides. And can you guess who made me purchase this? Yeah, um, and I've been trying this out as well, basically trying to find really ceramide rich options that are cruelty free, um, that are not ridiculously expensive. And I love that James brings this up. I have not personally tried this moisture powder rich cream, um, but I'm going to add it to my shop tagger account so that when it goes on sale, I can scoop it up. It has some great ingredients such as glycerin. It does have vinyl dimethicone. It does have penylene glycol, some coconut oil. Mm, coconut oil, um, 
for acne prone skin, you might not want to leave on your face. As a cleanser, I think it's totally fine. On a leave-on, I'm not totally sure, but maybe they formulate it in a way that they actually get the lauric acid out of there or the mystic acid out of there. Um, those are the fatty acids that can make up coconut oil. We've actually done a video on that too if you want the science. We do have polymethyl sesquioxane, which is nice. And then we do have some ceramides in here as were mentioned. The ceramides are probably my favorite part of this. Um, it does have cholesterol, which is wonderful, very nice for the skin. Our skin makes it naturally, um, but often that is animal derived. So I would want to know a little bit more about that. That, mm, before purchasing this. It says it's cruelty free, but I don't know if that cholesterol is vegan, which concerns me. We're gonna leave it out of my cart for now. Again, these are my obsessively restrictive morals and values preventing me from spending money unnecessarily. Yay! <laughs> The final product to use is... I'm not going to tell you which product it is, though, because I'm going to leave this step out because I want you to go watch James's full routine because there are a couple of things in that video that I didn't put in here. Go check it out. Show some love. Leave a comment under his video. Give it the little blue like button. Post a comment purely for the engagement. I will link his video right here or right here. Help yourself. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel or commented purely for the engagement or James Welsh's channel for the engagement or the Harper's Bazaar channel, I just made you a checklist of things to like, subscribe, bell notification on, and do. So like a good cult member, go ahead, take those steps, do those things so that you can complete your initiation. I'm just kidding, it's a club, not a cult. Where did people get that idea? Overall, remember to be beautiful both inside and out. Remember that skincare is self-care and I cannot wait to see you in the comments of the Harper's Bazaar video or maybe in the comments on James Wells' channel. <laughs> Love you guys. Bye.